Good day, my friends, and welcome to another exciting day of the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. Today we are on part five of our series of God's Plan for Humanity, and I pray you are enjoying this series so far. Contact us and let us know if you've been blessed. You can reach us on our website at mymdi.org. So my friends, yesterday we went a little deeper into the first of God's holy days mentioned in Leviticus 23.1, that the seventh day Sabbath, and we went into a deep dive on the history of Hellenism that was enforced in the land of Israel, and how the temple in Jerusalem was defiled by Antiochus Epiphanes, who set up the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, and how he even sacrificed a pig on the altar to the god of Zeus and outlawed the keeping of the Sabbath, of all the holy days, of eating clean kosher food, and he even forbid circumcision. All of these have violated was the penalty of death by his decree. Now this all happened between 167 to 137 BC. And then I asked, uh, asked you to put yourself in their place living during these times, your rights taken away, foreigners occupying your land, death was all around you for violating your own customs and traditions that were ordained by God. And then I asked to picture yourself living during the time of Jesus, just around 140 years later. And this man comes on the scene doing miracles and healings, claiming to be the Son of God, preaching a different gospel than what you have been taught since you were a child, how you were taught that the history of your people suffered greatly for breaking the commandments of God, and how the kingdom of Israel was split into two kingdoms. Brother was even fighting against brother, and one went into captivity, and then centuries later, your ancestors also went into captivity. But they were brought back into the land, and the temple was rebuilt, only later to have foreigners invade it once again and enact such severe conditions that your women and children were put to death in front of you. And you heard these stories growing up, and now yourself, you're living during the time of Jesus, you've gone to school, seminary, And you maybe have been chosen as a chief priest or a Pharisee, a protector of the commandments of God. And you're placed a hedge around the breaking of the law to protect your people from going back into captivity or far worse. This, my friends, was the religious environment during the time of Jesus. He was born during the Roman occupation, which followed the Greeks. But the Romans, unlike the Greeks, allowed the Jews to honor the Sabbath and to keep the commandments given by God. They were free to an extent, but not entirely free. And so now this man comes on the scene, claiming to be not just a prophet, but the Son of God, the Messiah of God. It was blasphemy to their ears. Because they were looking for a deliverer like Moses, not a sacrificial lamb to atone and cleanse them from their sins and usurp the God of this world, Satan. They were looking for this deliverer, Moses, who was going to replace Satan and begin the process of bringing true restoration to humanity by even removing the Romans at that time. They were looking for this deliverer to remove the Romans, to cleanse the land, and to finally bring about salvation for all people. And that's what they were looking for, to establishing the kingdom of God on this earth, a kingdom that Adam failed to establish, and one the Israelites also failed to bring into fruition. But the Pharisees did not understand the prophecies, and so their hearts were hardened, 
and they failed to see their true deliverer, their Messiah, right before their eyes living amongst them. And so, my friends, as the scriptures say in the book of Romans, if you turn to Romans 10, verse 2, if you have your Bibles, it says, For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. So let's review. Why is the Sabbath so important to God? And why should it be important to us? Notice in the book of Mark, in in chapter 2, in verses 27 to 28, Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, says to them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. So we see that the Sabbath was given to us. Why? Well, one, it was a memorial to God's creation. But more importantly, two, it is a sign between God and his people. Notice this in Exodus 31, beginning in verse 12. In Exodus 31, verse 12, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbath, notice he says, My Sabbath, you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. You shall keep the Sabbath. Therefore, for it is holy to you. And dropping down to verse 16, he says, Therefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. A never-ending covenant. It doesn't end, nor can it be changed. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And when he had made an end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, He gave Moses the two tablets of testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. And notice he gives a warning in verse 14. And people don't like the warning, but this is the warning. He says, everyone who profanes it shall surely be put to death. For whoever does any work on it, that person shall be cut off from among his people. Now I ask you, if the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath, why would God enact a death penalty for violating it? I know our minds have a hard time comprehending this, But it's as simple as this, my friends. Number one, he is God. And number two, he knew that as humans, we would work ourselves to death. So in essence, we would be killing ourselves. So he forces us to rest, to fellowship together with good food and wine, and to enjoy time with him, with your family, in worship, and singing praises, forgetting about work, forgetting about all your worldly pursuits and cares, and resting in his presence. He wants you to rest in his presence. He wants to be with his children. And in his ultimate wisdom, he knows what is best for us. So why do we fight it? Why do we always want to go astray and do the exact opposite 
of what God has given us for good. My friends, my wife and I work hard. We work very hard throughout the week. But on Friday afternoon, we begin preparing for the Sabbath. And even before then, we prepare great food ahead of time. We get together with friends. We light the candles. We say the blessings over the wine and the homemade challah bread. We enjoy a nice potluck dinner together, fellowshipping and discussing how everyone is doing. And then we retire after dinner into the living room or around the kitchen table, and we take turns reading the weekly Torah portions, the half Torah, which is the portion out of the prophets, and then the Brit Hadashah, which is the reading of the New Covenant. And they all go together in a beautiful theme every week. And every week, God reveals something new to us that we can apply to our everyday lives. And we open this up for discussion, and we see what the Lord puts on our hearts and how we can apply what we just read to our everyday lives. This is a beautiful time, a beautiful evening Why the world is out pursuing worldly lusts and partying and clubbing, we're gathering together with food and friends and God and reading his word. And this usually lasts from 7 to 10. And then we go home, we get some sleep. And then in the morning we attend a formal, former, formal, sorry, uh, Shabbat service at our Messianic congregation with praises of worship and seeing the Torah opened and read from and we hear an inspired message. We eat some more after the message together and we fellowship and sometimes we have these afternoon classes and we'll spend the whole day there at the synagogue just enjoying each other's company. It's a full 24 hours of resting in the Lord, in his presence, and it gives us a spiritual recharge to go out and do battle with the world the next week. It's a beautiful time, my friends. And it's a time that if you have experienced it, you know exactly what I'm saying. And if you haven't experienced then I pray that you will begin to experience it even this week, this Shabbat. So my friends, I have a lot more to say, but I'm keeping these portions short so that you can soak them in. And we're out of time for today, but let's pick this up tomorrow. Pray for us and consider becoming a monthly sponsor, no matter how small. We have free in-depth online classes available and we're developing future ones. Time is short, my friends, and we must be prepared. Email us and let us know how you're doing, how we're doing, and if you're praying for us. And again, you can donate on our website at mymdi.org and click on the giving menu button. And don't forget to share this message on your social media Help spread the word. You never know whose heart you're going to touch and save their soul. So until tomorrow, Shalom Aleichem. Peace, my friends, and we'll see you tomorrow.